When I was eight years old, I, um, you know, at school, they always do like the scoliosis checks and whatever. So um, they were like, something looks a little funny. Like you should probably go to a chiropractor and get that checked. So I was like, okay. The chiropractors, they initially found out, they're like, your shoulders are a little uneven. Like, I, I think you've got scoliosis. And I would feel like uncomfortable at times. And like, if I was walking too long or standing too long, going to the parks or whatever, um, you know, my back would just kind of hurt. I'd be like, okay guys, I need to sit down, need to take a little break. Um, but it honestly didn't really impair any like day-to-day -day activities. Scoliosis is a completely different type of uh, a ball game, I like to say. It's in a different realm. It's not an injury. It's not something that you normally would respond well just to traditional chiropractic meaning adjustments and basic therapies. Scoliosis is a developmental problem. And since it's a developmental problem, it's progressing as the patient is growing and developing, and it's very resistant to reduction or change. So using just traditional approaches on a traditional chiropractic clinic or office, the, the effects on actually reducing or controlling that scoliosis unfortunately is not predictable and it's very limited. That's why when somebody's in our office for scoliosis care, we expand that protocol to a, a protocol that's very specific, not only for scoliosis, but their scoliosis. When they first recommended surgery for me, um, we got that recommendation from the doctor I was going to at the time, and my mom was like, okay, we should probably get a second opinion on this. So we ended up going to a different doctor, and he was saying the same thing, and he even had a little like natural health like history and everything. There's a few people that I know that have gotten the surgery done, and um, to this day, like I hear them just talking about like back pain and everything, and like constricted to like staying stiff because they're putting like two metal rods in your spine. When a scoliosis is diagnosed in a severe category, greater than 45 degrees, at this stage, there's really only one recommendation once a patient consults with an orthopedic surgeon, and that would be surgery, especially if the child is still growing. With Bianca, her, she was at RISER 1, meaning that she was in the beginning stages of her RISER development, meaning she had several years of growth left. And you're in this category of over 45 degrees, her being a, much, a larger curve than that, what the orthopedic surgeon is saying, if we don't put a rod in this child's spine, this curve is gonna to continue to progress and become severe and be create more complications in their life, create more problems, more issues with function and pain as they continue to move into adulthood. So they're saying, okay, now this curve is big enough to risk that type of invasive treatment, which is the surgery. But if you work hard and if you, and you're consistent with your care, we can actually reduce your curve and, and number one, at least stop the progression, but even better, actually be able to reduce your curve some, make take 10, 15, 20 degrees off the curve, but well, that's even icing on the cake, really. Therefore, we can take cases that are predicted that, that you're gonna be a progressive curve, you gotta have surgery, and we can negate the progressive effect and stop that from happening. And that's why patients will say, hey, maybe this could be an option. Maybe this is something that we can do and we don't have to have that type of invasive surgery. So my mom, she was doing research every single night, like trying to find alternatives and everything. And that's when we came across Dr. Tony here at Max Living. Um, literally, it was two weeks before my scheduled surgery. I started at 65 degrees when I first came and saw him, and now my spine's down to 45 degrees. So it's a pretty big improvement. <laughs> Doing my home workouts, which only takes like max like 30 minutes a day or something like that, just setting aside those 30 minutes a day, I would so much rather do that every day than have to deal with either the pain of scoliosis or um, the like byproduct of the surgery and everything. First thing with Bianca is that she was young when we first caught her, so we, you know, which is good because we caught it young so we could prevent progression, but it's also more challenging because she has more growth left, meaning that they can progress more. But if I had a choice, I would rather catch somebody younger than older because younger, I, can, I have a greater chance to make an influence on their progression. Specifically is her curve type. Her curve is very high in her spine. She has a high thoracic curve, meaning between her shoulder blades, almost kind of into her neck. Now, the third thing is that she plays a banjo. And playing this banjo, could it possibly that all of this time playing banjo could have had an effect on where and how her curve developed? It's possible, we don't know. But we do know that type of asymmetrical position and the weight on her shoulders can actually affect the position of her spine. So all those things in, in combination put together this factor that, man, she's a high risk, that she's gonna worsen. So and that makes it more challenging, but it doesn't make it impossible. Meaning if all we do all the right things in reverse, 
we can have a positive effect and stop progression. This life's like a riptide and I'm hanging on. My sister and I have been writing our own music, releasing our own music for years, and it's something that we're obviously very passionate about. And we just came out with a new album, actually. It's called Growing Wings, and it kind of describes our journey over the past few years. Everyone has their struggles in life, you know, whether it's scoliosis. Um, my sister actually dealt with an eating disorder that she's very um, talkative about and everything. So for her, it's that. For me, it's scoliosis. Everyone has their something, you know. So we kind of incorporate those into some of our songs. We have this song called uh, Growing Wings that's kind of about just like, you know, like moving on to the next chapter of your life, even though you do struggle with some of these things, like, you know, growing your wings and like moving on, you know. And there's this other song that we have that's called Limitless, and it's just about no matter what stands in your way, if you have a goal like and you want to achieve that goal, you can, and you have to know that you're limitless. It's the easy way, obviously, for somebody in, in entertainment that somebody's always being looked at and stared at. She's on stage. The easy thing is just to get, you know, get a rod and take care of it, and hopefully that fixes everything, and it's an easy fix, easy out, and it looks easy. In fact, for a lot of kids, that's what they think. They go have a surgery, and it's an easy fix. But Bianca's smart enough to understand, say, hey, you know, there's complications of that, and so she's willing to take the time and the energy to, to work on her spine with exercises and rehab and chiropractic care and, and avoid that type of invasive surgery even though it means more work, or it seems like more work, but she understands that the more work now is less work later because she's gonna actually be healthier later on in life for it. Never made